coronavirus vaccine is opening trials to children as young as six months old. How the doses will differ for younger people involved in the trial. Today, legislation that's supposed to address the aftermath of February's deadly winter storm is set to become law. What measures Governor Greg Abbott is set to sign this afternoon? Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And new at noon, the San Antonio Independent School District, the latest target on thieves going for catalytic converters. The district tells us that sometime overnight, at least 20 vehicles in its facilities and maintenance fleet had their catalytic converters stolen. The district says none of the school buses were affected and they were able to get kids to school this morning. Catalytic converter thefts have been on the rise locally. Recently, a Northside car dealership had more than 50 vehicles hit. Thieves are targeting metals inside the converters. That could mean hundreds to thousands of dollars. A man is dead at this noon and his killer remains free. San Antonio police say the man died after someone shot him while he was sitting in a car on the city's northwest side. As Tiffany Huertas reports, when police find the suspect, that person will face a murder charge. Yellow tape surrounded this gas station on the 5400 block of Grism Road Tuesday morning. San Antonio police received a call for a shooting around 2 a.m. Police say a 35 year old man was sitting inside his vehicle in the gas station parking lot when he was shot once in the stomach and once in the leg. The man was parked next to a family member when the shots were fired. The wounded man was rushed to University Hospital where he later died. Police spent the morning investigating here at the gas station. At one point, tow trucks took two vehicles from the scene. The San Antonio Fire Department and EMS also answered the call. The victim has not been identified. No arrests have been made, but the suspect is facing a murder charge. Reporting from the Northwest Side, Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Today, Governor Greg Abbott is expected to sign legislation into law that aims to address some of the issues we saw during February's winter storm. Around 1 o'clock this afternoon, Abbott will hold a press conference to sign ERCOT reforms and power grid weatherization legislation into law. The goal is to improve the reliability of the state's power grid. February's historic winter blackout left more than 4 million people without power and several dozen people died after the storm slammed Texas with brutal conditions. Now to the growing concern over cyber attacks around the world. Authorities recovered millions in ransom money from the hackers who attacked the Colonial Fuel Pipeline. And as ABC's Rena Rohr reports, federal investigators also took down criminal organizations around the globe using an encrypted platform. Here in the U.S., concern over cyber attacks and global crime growing. The White House warning companies to act now, saying no one is safe. And now a big break in the investigation into one of the most disruptive cyber attacks in recent U.S. history. The Justice Department recovering $2.3 million in cryptocurrency by hacking the Russian cyber criminal group Darkside, who attacked the Colonial Pipeline, shutting it down last month. The old adage, follow the money still applies. And that's exactly what we do. Today, we turned the tables on dark side. For six days, the hackers crippled the key fuel line, triggering gas shortages and panic buying. Pipeline officials ultimately paying more than $4 million in hopes of bringing operations back online. The CEO of the company testifying on Capitol Hill Tuesday. We quietly and quickly worked with the law enforcement in this matter from the start which may have helped lead to the substantial recovery of funds announced by the DOJ this week. Meantime, 800 people arrested around the world in a coordinated years-long global sting led by the FBI called Operation Trojan Shield. In tandem with 16 countries using an encrypted communications platform called ANOM developed by the FBI. Officials calling it an unprecedented blow to criminal organizations. This law enforcement operation is exceptional by its global outcomes. The app allowed authorities to see exactly what the alleged criminals were planning. Criminal communicated in 45 languages about things like trafficking in drugs, arms and explosive. As part of Operation Trojan Shield, $48 million in cryptocurrency was confiscated along with hundreds of firearms, more than 50 luxury cars and 32 tons of drugs, including cocaine. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. President Biden is set to meet with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Geneva next week, and he says he plans to confront him on cybersecurity. 
Pfizer is opening up its COVID-19 vaccine trials to include children 11 years old and younger. The company plans to enroll up to 4,500 children across 90 sites in the U.S., Finland, Poland and Spain. The testing will include children as young as six months old. Participants will get two shots of smaller doses. Right now, Pfizer is authorized in the U.S. for children 12 and older. Meanwhile, Moderna says its COVID-19 vaccine will likely be available for children as young as five years old in the early fall. The company is also testing its shots in children as young as six months old. June is a national month of action for COVID-19 vaccines, and this week the city is holding more pop-up clinics. One clinic just opened over at the Collins Gardens Library. It ends at 8 o'clock tonight. We've got a list of the clinics that are scheduled to open up this week, as well as times and locations. You can find that information on kset.com. Just click on the coronavirus tab. Aside from the pop-up clinics, you can also get your shot at Wonderland of America's Mall, which is open at 11 till 7, Monday through Friday, and at the Alamo Dome, which is open Wednesday through Friday from noon until 8. Tomorrow, KSAT is hosting a virtual town hall to stress the importance and relevance of Juneteenth. It marks the day enslaved Texans were officially proclaimed free. Trinity University history professor Carrie Lattimore will join KSAT 12 anchors Isis Romero and Steve Spreester for the live stream tomorrow night at 7 p.m. But we want you to join the conversation. Just head over to KSAT.com and look at this article. That's where you can submit your questions, comments, and stories. Then, in, then tune into the live stream on KSAT.com or KSAT TV on your streaming device. A hot week will give way to some chances for showers and storms late in the weekend. We'll take a look at that forecast coming up. Also coming up this half hour, no more just free agents and rookies. All the Cowboys expected to report to a mandatory mini camp starting today. Alzheimer's disease affects one in every nine people ages 65 and older. But there are things you can do to help ward off dementia, like making sure your health conditions are well managed. Why steps like these could decrease your risk. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration just approved the use of the experimental drug for early phases of Alzheimer's disease. That's despite an FDA advisory committee concluding last year that there is not enough evidence to support the effectiveness of the treatments. Meanwhile, more than 6 million Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease, and that number is projected to increase to nearly 13 million by 2050. But there are steps you can take today to lower your risk of developing this devastating brain disease. And how old are you now? Goodness, I don't know. It steals memories, abilities, and personalities. Alzheimer's disease affects one in every nine people aged 65 and older. Happy. In a new scientific statement published in the journal Stroke, researchers outline ways to ward off dementia. They say it's crucial to manage blood sugar, blood pressure, sleep problems, hearing difficulties, cholesterol, depression, and weight gain. That's because when these conditions are out of control, your risk for cognitive decline is greater. The experts warn that smoking is a habit to steer clear of. Smokers have up to 75% greater risk of developing dementia. Heavy alcohol use over a long period of time can also lead to brain damage. Try sticking to one drink a day or less. A healthy diet may also protect your brain. One recent study found a slice of bacon a day increased the risk of dementia by 44% and try to exercise at least 150 minutes a week. Avoid social isolation and keep your mind active as much as possible. Researchers in the study stress the importance of primary care in preventing dementia. They are the first line of defense in preventing and postponing cognitive decline in their patients. Get outside with live can. Ooh, look at that up there. Is that 87? Woo. Wow, man. I'm, not, I'm already sweating just thinking about it. Welcome to summertime. The problem is that uh, 87 feels like it's 95 when you factor in all that humidity. It looks hazy out there, then all that humidity is in place, and it's sticking with us for a couple more days. The aquifer is down a little bit today, two tenths of a foot to 671.1. Still a great number, though. And the uh, molds down to the moderate category, 830. Grass is low. Looks like we're going to have a pretty quiet weather pattern. Humidity does go away a little bit, but the uh, rain chances kick back in by the weekend. We'll talk about it coming up.
Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Welcome back. It's 1214. There's a lot of fun for everyone this summer at SeaWorld San Antonio as the park gets fully back to normal. The park has several big plans in the next few months, including the Electric Ocean Concert Series featuring musical acts for younger and older generations of fans. There is also a lot of family fun entertainment with the Sesame Street characters you see on your screen there and a nightly parade for the kids. SeaWorld's Chuck Career talked to us this morning about the upcoming entertainment and job opportunities. We have chart toppers like Vanilla Ice and En Vogue, and um, we also have some tribute bands. There's a Selena experience. Everyone loves Selena. Come on out and experience that. We're hiring in every single department. There are some hiring bonuses of $200 or $500 for select positions. There's even some retention bonuses. If you stay with us and throughout the entire summer, we'll give you $1,000 for some positions. You Check out SeaWorldJobs.com for more information and check out the site for the full concert schedule. The concert is free with the price of admission. The Cookie Monster looked like uh, he was looking for some cookies. I mean, I, was, I love, was none there. I love none. seeing the Cookie Monster. He was he like, was my hmm, where are all the cookies? He ate them all. <laughs> I don't see it. He's one of the best. He is. Yeah. The best. Uh, looks like a lot of fun out there at SeaWorld. And if you're going out there today or through the next week, it, it's going to be hot. Pack the water, have it with you because uh, temperatures are going to get into the 90s, but it's going to feel like it's in the 100s. We sort of know the drill around here. The good news is it looks like the pattern tries to change a little bit late in the weekend. Let's first take a look at the time lapse and it was cloudy and hazy this morning. We actually had a couple of very light showers move through thanks to an outflow battery, but it uh, definitely didn't amount to much. We're just talking about a trace of rainfall. 86 degrees right now. Sun's trying to pop out. Southeasterly winds at about 17. The dew point, amazingly, has gone up 76. That is extremely humid, and we're dealing with that area wide. Uh, you look at the satellite picture, clouds are breaking up, so the sun's popping out. It's going to be a toasty day. Temperatures already up to 86 at the airport, 86 Randolph, 87 New Braunfels, 85 in Seguin, close to 90 in Pleasanton. Cloud cover thickest right there around Uvalde and Kerrville. Temperatures still in the 70s there. 81 Rock Springs and 85 right now in Del Rio, but these dew points. I mentioned this at nine. This is about as high as they go. I mean, we're talking mid to upper 70s here. It doesn't get much higher than that. It's extremely sticky air. And then the dangerous part of it is when you factor that in with these temperatures, the heat index just goes through the roof. So it'll feel like it's in the 100s. Already does in Pleasanton. Heat index right now is 102, 100 in Catula. And Catula could go as high as 110. There are heat advisories posted to our south. And there's the forecast heat index today here in San Antonio. It goes high as 102, 105 in Hondo, 109 in Eagle Pass. So be careful outside this afternoon. 91 degrees, the expected air temperature with partly cloudy skies. Southeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. Uh, satellite picture again shows what we were dealing with this morning. There was an outflow boundary that came through. Again, it just didn't produce much rain. Most of the rain is off to our north and east. Severe thunderstorm warnings. Still ongoing there across parts of western Louisiana as another complex of showers and storms rotates through. This looks really similar to yesterday's map. And as we look at the future cast here down the line, high pressure is very much in control through much of the week uh, into the weekend. It's not until Sunday that this thing moves far enough west that it sort of opens the door. We get northerly flow, which typically is pretty good for us. We may get some showers and storms to develop right now. It still looks like a 20% chance, and this would be late on Sunday. So most of the weekend is going to be just fine. But Sunday night, maybe into Monday, that's when we could see a few storms. If you're heading to Port A or Rockport this weekend, we got the forecast for you. Low 90s there along the beaches. Water temperatures at 87. That's not bad. Uh, moderate rip currents. Rain chances 20%, but I think that's mainly on Sunday if you're heading out that way. Uh, wave high four to five feet. So really good beach weather. Uh, if that is in your plans this weekend. There again could be a stray shower or storm and that that's the case for us uh, Sunday into Monday. 91 today, 92 tomorrow, 92 Thursday, 93 Friday. It's pretty uniform. Uh, that 20% chance late on Sunday and a 20% chance on Monday. Overnight lows are in the 70s and that humidity is not going anywhere. It does decrease a little bit by the end of the work week, but not 
much, guys. All right, Justin, thank you very much. Still to come, the mandatory mini camps are open for some NFL teams. And a former Spurs assistant is now a head coach of the year again. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Big day in Tampa Bay. Yesterday was the day that NFL mandatory mini camps started to open. The defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers were the first to get on the field. Remember the Bucs? Brought back every starter from their championship team last year. Of course, that includes quarterback Tom Brady, who won his seventh Super Bowl title with Tampa Bay, their second overall in team history. And remember, the Buccaneers will kick off the NFL season when they host the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday, September 9th. And speaking of the Cowboys, they kick off their mandatory minicamp today. Like all other NFL teams, the Cowboys missed an entire offseason under new head coach Mike McCarthy last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. After giving up the most points in team history at 473 last year, the Cowboys got rid of defensive coordinator Mike Nolan and hired Dan Quinn. Through the draft, they selected eight defensive players out of 11 picks and signed Knute Neal through free agency. The Cowboys are trying to rebuild that Dallas D. I've been impressed by this crew, um, you know, the, the eight draft picks and I think three free agents that we signed. And I think probably the, uh, the thing that jumped out to me um, was the speed of the group, um, whether it be in the secondary or at linebacker, you could just really feel that speed, um, you know, from the perimeter guys. On the inside guys, it's a mature group um, that we added to the defensive line. Obviously, you feel the size of Bohanna and his strength. Maybe not as much because it's, you know, more of a passing camp. But I have been impressed by Golston, Odigazua. Those are guys we're trying to feature into some pass rushing roles. So I'd say of the group of 11, speed, that jumped out to me. And then for the big guys, um, you know, let's continue to develop and see what we have with Odigazua and Golston. But those two inside have uh, certainly jumped out to me as pass rush. In the meantime, the Houston Texans don't kick off their mandatory minicamp until a week from today. And when they do... And they will have a decision to make. Do they start finding Deshaun Watson, who is expected to miss the mandatory event, especially after he has skipped both sessions of organized team activities? The Texans have had trouble trying to meet his trade demands in light of the fact that he is facing 22 lawsuits for sexual assault and misconduct during massages. This is also the first offseason workouts under new head coach David Culley, who is trying to rebuild this team that finished 4-12 and last year and told us why they decided to go out and sign Tyrod Taylor. Well, we didn't have but one quarterback on the roster at that time, signs. So we were going to go out, and, and Nick and his staff went out, and we were going to sign uh, uh, some more guys to the roster that we needed to have. And Tyrod was available. He had some other places to go. Uh, he chose here simply because he's familiar with, with Pep. He's familiar with me. Uh, he's familiar with what we're all about, and, and, and it's fit in just perfectly for us. Alabama head football coach Nick Saban has been awarded a three-year contract extension after leading the Crimson Tide to six national championships, including this last year's 52-24 victory over Ohio State. The new agreement extends his current contract to a total of eight years. It ends in 2028. He's now going to make just over $8.4 million this coming season. And according to ESPN, he's going to get a raise. His annual salary is going to go up to $10 million a season over the life of his contract. Saban entering his 15th year at Alabama. And if you include the national championship he won at LSU, that gives him a total of seven national titles, which is the most in college football history. Former Spurs assistant coach Tom Thibodeau has been named the NBA's coach of the year. He just edged out former Spur Monty Williams of the Phoenix Suns for the Red Auerbach Trophy. It was the narrowest margin since the current voting format began back in 2003. Now, this is the second time Thibodeau has won the coach of the year honors and only the second coach to do it in the first year with two different teams. He did it with Chicago and now he's done it with the Knicks. Tom managed to lead the Knicks to their first playoff appearance since 2013. And Daryl Morey is the president of basketball operations for the Philadelphia 76ers. He's been fined $75,000. In addition, the team has also been fined 75 grand because the NBA says they violated the league's anti-tampering rule. That's in response to a social media post made earlier this month regarding Golden State's Steph Curry. 
And the Smithson Valley Rangers are headed to the state baseball tournament for the first time since 2005. That's after they eliminated Los Fresnos in a one game winner take all region four championship that had to be played over two days due to the weather and cannabis complex. We all felt it after Los Fresnos was able to tie the game at two all in the sixth inning on Thursday. The Rangers got the lead back in the seventh inning on Friday. Tim Arguello singled and scored Ryan Ruff, but Los Presos was able to load up the bases again in the bottom of the seventh until pitcher Brandon Taylor took his comebacker and threw it over to first. That was the final out. Now the Rangers, who are 35-5, and five, are going to face Rockwall Heath in the Class 6A state semifinals. It's going to be insane. I remember watching, watching minor league games when I was little at Dell Diamond, thinking, like, man, it would be awesome if I play there. And now the dream finally came true. This is going to be uh, probably the most fun that I've had all season. Uh, being able to practice for one last week with all my teammates and being able to go to the state tournament is what I've been dreaming of. The first pitch between Smithson Valley and Rockwall, he's set for Friday night, 7 o'clock, Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Always fun to play in the big, the big stadiums. Yeah, good luck, guys. Yeah, good deal. It's exciting. All right, the physical health benefits of adding omega-3s into your diet are widely touted, but did you know they could help you during stressful moments? We'll explain how coming up in our next half hour. The Senate investigation is now pointing out more missteps surrounding the attack at the U.S. Capitol in January. Still ahead, a look at the first bipartisan report just issued by lawmakers. And you today at five feeling the heat? Oh yeah, the summer temps are cranking up and so is the humidity. If you don't have central AC, you might be considering a portable unit, but they can be expensive, bulky, and even noisier than you might think. Coming up today at five, why a window unit might be the way to go and not what newer models have to offer. That's today at five after Entertainment Tonight. We now turn to what's happening on Capitol Hill. The Senate has issued the first bipartisan report on the January 6th siege of the Capitol. ABC's Alex Perche tells us the report examines the security failures that helped enable the riots and outlines the steps needed to pre prevent another attack from ever happening again. The first congressional report investigating the deadly January 6th insurrection is out now and makes it clear. Stop! There were security and intelligence failures at every level of government leading up to the Capitol breach. Detailed in its 95 pages, the bipartisan Senate investigation found significant breakdowns, including federal intelligence agencies failing to warn of a potential for violence. Homeland Security Panel Chairman Senator Gary Peters on CNN. It was widely known that it would be a very likely violent crowd that was coming to Washington, D.C. They did not put out intelligence warnings so that would have informed uh, local officials as to how to adequately prepare. The investigation also found a lack of planning and preparation by U.S. Capitol Police and law enforcement leadership. There wasn't adequate training. There wasn't adequate protocols when it came to uh, getting the National Guard to respond. The report took roughly five months to complete, a joint probe by the Senate Homeland Security and Rules Committees, ultimately creating a list of 20 recommendations, including giving the new Capitol Police chief the power to directly request National Guard assistance in emergencies, and also recommending that Capitol Police officers be trained and equipped appropriately. As many officers responding on January 6 were in regular duty uniforms, not riot gear. But the scope of the report is narrow, only focusing on what happened that day but not focused on the root cause of the violence and not on former President Donald Trump, who was accused of inciting the Capitol riot and was impeached for his actions that day. Trump was later acquitted by the Senate. Last week, Senate Republicans blocked the creation of an independent bipartisan commission to look into the root cause of the riot. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The U.S. could miss President Joe Biden's vaccination goal. President Biden's goal was to get 70 percent of American adults vaccinated by the 4th of July. The reports show on average only 410,000 adults are getting their first vaccine dose each day. That's a sharp decline from the numbers we saw back in April. These numbers put the U.S. on track to have 68 percent of adults partially vaccinated by Independence Day just short of the president's goal. This comes as southern states like Mississippi, Alabama and Louisiana start to see an increase in cases. Our numbers have increased back towards 400 or 500 cases a day. And I'm sitting a little bit on pins and needles right now. If we see our cases increasing to a thousand or higher, that means we definitely fail the Memorial Day stress test. 
Cases in Alabama have increased 90 percent in the last two weeks. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris has arrived in Mexico, where she'll meet with President Lopez Obrador. This follows a visit to Guatemala yesterday, and while she was there, she issued a blunt and clear message to migrants looking to make the dangerous journey to the U.S. border. Do not come. CNN's Matt Rivers has more from Mexico City. Well, the first leg of her first foreign trip is now over, and Vice President Kamala Harris is now here in Mexico for the second leg. She will spend today talking to top Mexican officials, including Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. She spent the day on Monday in Guatemala talking to that country's president and others about the stated reason for this trip, which, according to the vice president's office, it's a fact-finding mission to try and figure out how best to fundamentally address the root causes of migration, why so many migrants have been headed to the U.S. southern border as of late. And of course, we know what some of those issues are. It's violence, it's poverty, and it's also the systemic corruption that plagues governments uh, across this region, with Vice President Harris announcing that a new task force will be created to try uh, and ease some of those corruption issues that have led, in many cases directly, to so many migrants headed north. Those are gonna be the similar topics of conversation that she has here in Mexico, because it's not just migrants from El Salvador and Guatemala and Honduras going to the U.S. There are also a large number of Mexicans that have been migrating to the U.S. as of late. Uh, we heard from the Mexican president on Monday morning at a press conference. Without giving many details, he said he does expect to sign some deals with Vice President Harris, including deals about uh, development and migration. He didn't say much more than that, but we're certainly going to be paying very close attention to see how these meetings today here in Mexico play out. Matt Rivers, CNN, Mexico City. The Biden administration says it identified nearly 4,000 children who were separated from their parents at the U.S.-Mexico border. And the Biden administration says it's reviewing more cases, which means the final count may be higher. This is all according to the Family Reunification Task Force report released, which the administration released today. It's the, rep the report provides data that hasn't been previously released Nearly 60% of children separated under the zero tolerance policy were Guatemalan. The Border Patrol in Arizona sector recorded the highest number of separations. Outside with live cam, Ooh, it's already warm. The humidity is going to get us, but people are pretty excited because, like I said before, all you got to do is remember February. Well, that's true. That's Polar true. Forte. It wasn't that long ago that we were dealing with those yeah. uh, single digits. Sounds weird to say, but yes, uh, here in San Antonio. Now we're on the flip side of things where it is very toasty and very humid. Before we jump into our forecast, I want to give you some news just coming out of northeast uh, Texas. A tornado has been reported in Tyler. Uh, this happened around 9.30 or 10 this morning. It was on the uh, west side of the city. Thankfully, not a lot of damage. It looks like it was a rather weak tornado, but there you go. There's a storm report coming in. With that storm that was out ahead of the line of storms that pushed east, they will be doing some uh, damage pickup there in the city of Tyler as those storms continue to push into Louisiana. Uh, but just an update for you there. Meantime, for us, temperatures are in the 80s, 86 in Holotus, 86 Randolph, 88 Stinson, 89 Pleasanton. These numbers will continue to rise as the sun is now out. The thickest of the clouds still up around Bandera and Tarpois. So that's keeping temperatures down a little bit there, but everybody will eventually make it into the 90s today, and that will push heat index values into the triple digits. Look at these numbers. 102 is what it could feel like this afternoon here in San Antonio. 110 Del Rio, 105 in Uvalde. Not a fun time to be outside. Uh, this trend continues into tomorrow as well, and really through the, the end of the week. Uh, 91, the official high today. Southeast Chile winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. We'll be down to 88, 7 o'clock, 84, 10 p.m. with partly cloudy skies. Guys? Thank you, Justin. A new study suggests omega-3 may offer benefits in reducing the effects of stressful situations on our bodies. ABC's News' Aika Jachi has more on how you can get more omega-3s in your diet. 
Living hectic lives and juggling as much as we can before the pandemic and during, we could all benefit from ways to ease the toll of stress in our bodies. Researchers at Ohio State University found omega-3 supplements may reduce stress and inflammation signals in the body after stressful events. Taking daily omega-3 supplements lower the levels of the stress hormone cortisol after experiencing a stressful situation like public speaking. And it also decreased levels of some inflammation signals, suggesting omega-3 could help lessen the effect of stress on our cells. Some studies also show omega-3 may reduce the effects of aging on our cells and could also lower the risk of heart disease. So where can you get some omega-3? Foods rich in omega-3 include fatty fish like salmon or tuna. You can also use an omega-3 over-the-counter supplement. And it's always a good idea to maintain a healthy lifestyle with good food and regular exercise for your overall well-being. With this Medical Minute, I'm Ike Giacci, ABC News. Lynn Manuel Miranda's first Tony winning Broadway musical gets a big screen adaptation, a preview in the Heights later in the spotlight. Fisher Price is accused of ignoring repeated safety warnings of one of their products. What a House committee investigation is saying about its rock and roll sleeper. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Fisher Price under fire for allegedly ignoring repeated safety warnings on one of their products. A House committee investigation says that Fisher Price did not adequately vet their rock and roll sleeper for a decade. That led to over 50 infant deaths. The sleeper was recalled in 2019, but was heavily criticized for its lack of safety for infants. Meanwhile, Carnival Cruise Lines requiring all passengers to be fully vaccinated once sailings resume. All passengers have to have their final COVID vaccine dose at least 14 days before the start of their cruise. The first cruise is setting sail in the Carnival Vista on July the 3rd from Galveston, Texas. The company looking into whether or not they can require proof of vaccination. This after the Texas governor signed legislation banning vaccine passports. And NBC announcing they're going to show more than 7,000 hours of content from the Tokyo Olympics. The media company will use two broadcast networks, six cable networks, and multiple streaming platforms, all to show the global games in Tokyo. The Summer Olympics, typically a huge drop for NBC. The games attracted over 27 and a half million viewers across NBC platforms back in 2016. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. A new study shows bots are spreading misinformation about COVID-19 mask research. Researchers looked at Facebook posts about a study that was in support of mask use. They focused their efforts on the five days after the study was posted. There were 563 shares to Facebook groups and 39% were mostly done by bots. Researchers also found more than 50% made conspiratorial claims about the research. They did not specify who was behind the posts. And you might have noticed that some of your favorite internet sites and apps weren't working earlier today. Several of them went offline after a widespread outage. Those major websites and apps are back up. That's good news. The problem appears to be related to an outage at Fastly. That's a cloud service provider. It supports sites like CNN, The Guardian, The New York Times, Twitch, Pinterest, HBO Max, Reddit, Spotify, and even the UK government's homepage. Fastly says it was able to identify the problem and fix it. The outage affected dozens of countries across the Americas, Europe and Asia, as well as South Africa. Justin, 89 degrees, but you're saying it feels like 98 degrees? Uh, yeah, it feels like it's in the mid 90s. Uh. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> you can put it into words. That's it right there. Uh, 86, the high so far today. 77 was the low this morning. We didn't get below 77. The average is 72, so that gives you an idea. Just humidity keeps those temperatures up at night. Record is 101 set back in 1948. Thankfully, that's not in jeopardy today, but it's certainly going to feel that way when you factor in the humidity. We'll take another look at the forecast coming up. So that 88 might be in 98? 
It, I mean, we have been so spoiled. Yeah, but, uh, you, you know, know. I, I like the rain because the cooler temps, and now it's just summer's here. It should be here. It's time. It's all part of the equation. You take the good with the bad, right? <laughs> the pools are open. Parks are open. Places are open to go cool off. So let's enjoy it. Do cool. the best you can Winter to stay comes. cool because it, it's tough. It's tough with temperatures like this. Uh, you look at the numbers, you'd say, ah, that's not so bad. But the humidity is just so high, and therein lies the problem. Uh, we do want to talk about the tropics because it's that time of year where we can get some development down there and that can sometimes provide some relief. We do have an area that we're watching, but it's way down there in the Caribbean. 30% chance of development according to the Hurricane Center. This likely, if it were to develop, and it looks like it would take a couple days, uh, would move into Central America and just bring some heavy rain there not necessarily move north into the Gulf of Mexico. So it looks like this isn't going to have any sort of effect on us, but I just want to show you that things are starting to heat up a little bit down in the Caribbean. Next couple of months, we'll be keeping a close eye on that area. Meantime, blue sky is starting to show up. Temperatures here in San Antonio are jumping into the 80s. Here's what to expect today. Hot, humid, heat index 100 plus in a lot of places this week. Slightly lower humidity, I'd say, by maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, but uh, it's still going to be high enough to where it's not going to be so nice to be outside. So that's just kind of uh, trying to look on the positive side of things, I'd say. And then this weekend, there could be an isolated storm or two late on Sunday into next week. Looks like we'll have some rain chances, too. Satellite pictures shows uh, we've got quite a bit of cloud cover out there, although it's starting to break up a little bit earlier than yesterday. So that would uh, tell me that we're going to see some slightly warmer temperatures today. Temperatures already up to 89 in Castroville, 82 Bernie Stage, 87 in New Braunfels, 85 in Seguin. Underneath some of the thicker clouds, it's 78 in Uvalde, 81 in Kerrville, but 90s on the map, Catula down to Laredo. Here's the kicker. It's these dew points in the mid-70s. You would hope by midday that this number would start to go down a little bit. It hasn't really budged at all. So that means that dew points will at least stay in the low to mid 70s into the afternoon. And that's where you start to deal with those uh, pretty crazy heat indices. Already seeing numbers uh, around 100 in Pleasanton. That's your feels like temperature. Gonzalez, same story. Catula 100 here in San Antonio feels like 96. So pretty much guaranteed today that the heat index will jump over 100 this afternoon. Forecast calls for 102. 110, the feels like temperature in Carrizo Springs, 109, the heat index by 5 o'clock today in Catua. There are heat advisories down to the south of San Antonio, regardless if there's an advisory or not, and these have all sorts of different criteria. It, just be careful. That's the bottom line. It's hot no matter where you go. Satellite picture shows uh, the cloud cover pretty nicely, and we mentioned those storms up across North Texas today producing a tornado around Tyler a little bit earlier. These storms are pushing now into the Shreveport area. There's watches and warnings there, but that's where all the active weather will be well to our north and east this afternoon. So down the line, high pressure is very much in control, and that's why things will stay fairly quiet uh, and, and toasty. But as we get into the weekend, the high pressure moves far enough west and far enough north to where it sort of opens the door a little bit. We'll get northerly flow, and that typically helps to produce a few showers and storms around here. So I'd say Sunday night into Monday. Those are two time frames we'll watch, and we'll put some rain chances in there. Low 90s this week, morning clouds, afternoon sun will be the trend, and 20% uh, chance of some storms late on Sunday. Same story on Monday, guys. Hot. Thank you, Justin. Well, another musical is hitting the big screen. What it took to get in the heights from the stage to the big screen. Today's all we got, so we cannot stop. This is our block. In the heights. Director John M. Chu takes Lin-Manuel Miranda's Tony-winning musical In the Heights from the stage to the big screen with Tony nominee Olga Meredith from the Broadway cast. He just kind of elevated it and opened it up in a, in a new and, and, and wonderful way. And a new group of triple threat performers. I can pitch as much as I want that we want you know, to ease and out of mu music as if it's natural, but I'm not doing it. We gotta find people who do speak this language. You can go from song into dialogue into movement as if it is one language. Corey Hawkins, who plays Benny, remembers seeing the show on Broadway when he was living in Washington Heights. I recognized it. I recognized myself. I recognized 
um, the community. I, I knew what that was because I knew the love that they gave me when I when I got there. So I knew I, I connected to Benny already on an organic sort of cellular level. Bill Sherman and Alex Lacamoire, who won Tonys and Grammys for the stage show, were excited to revisit the music. When we knew we were doing this movie, we were like, well, it's got to be bigger and better and more awesome. And we, we kept on referring to it as 2.0. There are going to be people who are hearing it for the first time and will be like, oh my God, this music sounds so fresh. I'm really uh, excited for people who might not be familiar with this work to be more familiar with it via the movie. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. That looks like a lot of fun right there. I want to see that. Hey, just in a few hours until the SA Live Summer Fun Special in primetime. In just a few minutes until we get a sneak preview. Yeah, Mike and Fiona here to let us know what's on the show today and what we can expect on the primetime special tonight. Well, with all the summer fun you can have in and around town, don't worry because this is your preview of our summer fun special in prime time. Yep, and before we get to that, how about a little barbecue? SoTex Barbecue has been voted number one by you, the greatest viewers in the world, and we're going to have a little sample. And how about a summer camp with the Humane Society of San Antonio? That is a doggone good time. Yes, indeed. <laughs> okay, remember your glory days out there on the gridiron? Do you? Well, <laughs> here's a flashback to it. I don't know how glorious it is. <laughs> and if you want to go somewhere and stay cool while having fun with the family, Sea Life San Antonio Aquarium, we're going to give you a sneak peek and check out a shark feeding. Yes, and then the mom of four boys, Christy Gutford, is going to be here. Some great summer activities, including ski ball and this fucking car wash. It was so much fun. Like Hot Wheels. <laughs> and, yeah, with Hot Wheels and for the grown-ups too. Yeah. Yes. All that and more when SA Live continues in just a few minutes.